Hey Glenwood kids, Mrs. Lawson here. It's good to see you again this week. Today is Father's Day and I was just thinking about my dad. When I was little, he went to work every day to build houses. Sometimes I got to watch him work and I loved the smell of the sawdust and the sound of the hammer and the feel of the smooth wood in my hands. In fact, I still love the smell and the feel of wood. So during our time together today, I'm going to use these hinged wooden blocks to form each letter in the word Father. And each letter will represent a word that describes God, our Heavenly Father. The first letter is F. And this reminds me that God is our friend. He always listens when we talk to him and it makes his heart glad when we do. He loves to be with us. God not only is our friend, but he also gives us friends. I'm excited to introduce you today to some new friends, the Cunningham family. They have just moved here from California and Mr. Cunningham now works at our church as the director of equipping. Welcome Cunningham family. Hi Glenwood, we're your new neighbors. Hey guys, it's the Cunningham family. Uh, my name is Ben Cunningham. Um, I'm the new director of equipping at Glenwood and we're excited to be here in this area and at this church and on the staff. Um, we're looking forward to getting to know you better. Uh, here's my wife. Hi there Glenwood, my name is Bree Cunningham. We moved up here from Roanoke Park, California last week. We left the Bay Area and arrived here on Thursday and we're met by a gracious group from Glenwood Community who helped us unload our large truck. We're slowly setting up our house and making it a home and we're looking forward to having you guys into it and to getting to know this community. Hi guys, um, I'm the oldest. I'm going into high school. Uh, I'm excited to meet you guys in the youth group and I can't wait to meet you in actual person. Hi Glenwood, this is the next child and I'm really excited um, about meeting all of you and I'm also going into junior high. Hi Glenwood, I'm in elementary school and I look forward to making new friends. Hi Glenwood, I'm in elementary school. I can't wait to make new friends. Bye Glenwood! Bye, Bye Glenwood! The next letter in the word father is A. And this reminds me that our Father God is an amazing creator. From the tiniest insect crawling on the ground to towering volcanic mountains and fascinating sea creatures, God made them all. Last week, we met some new friends who love exploring God's amazing creation. Hey friends, welcome to the Nature Minute with the Nature Nates. I'm Nate. And I'm Nate. Today. today, we're going to go down to the Brawny Surf and observe some marine life. We're going to do what? We're going to the beach. Oh, right. I, I should have guessed. So how are we going to get there? Are we going to run? Nah, we're going to take the night mobile. Oh, yeah. All right. Catch you later. Shoot. to hunt their food by grinding up schools of fish, just like cowboys and cowgirls. Wow, they sound like great team players. You know, I've also heard stories of how dolphins will protect and save other fish and humans from drowning by pushing them to the surface of the water. Yeah, that's right. They care for others like they're members of their own family. In fact, they've also been known to rescue swimmers from sharks or bring them gifts of food like fish and squid. Wow, that's gross, but generous. Wow, what 
an adventure. Yeah. You know, I've been thinking. For those of us who have a relationship with God, there's a lot we can learn about Him from nature. And so while we're out on these crazy adventures, there's a lot we can be learning. And today, I'm learning that God cares about relationships. What makes you say that, mate? Well, we were talking about dolphins. These creatures who work together like a family, who support humans or other animals when they're drowning. They're trying to help others, and so relationships seem really important to them. And I think God, who created them, cares about relationships too. Yeah, and you see that all over in nature. Relationships are really important to a lot of animals, like gaggles of geese, schools of fish, colonies of ants, troops of monkeys. Yeah, yeah, and not only that, in the Bible, Genesis 1, 2, and 3 shows us that God created us to live with Him. It seems that the most important relationship for God is His relationship with you. He wants to live all of life with you. So the most important thing we can do in life is get closer to Him. Yeah, that's wow. right. Thanks for joining us for this Nature Minute. Catch you later. Nate's out. Our next letter is T, and this reminds me that our Father God can always be trusted. When we talk to God and when we read the promises He gives us in the Bible, we can trust that His Word is always right and true. You know, this reminds me of a Glenwood friend, Mr. Tibbetts. He enjoys flying his family airplane. And every time he flies, Mr. Tibbetts needs to know that he can trust his plane to fly well. So he carefully inspects it and makes sure it has plenty of fuel before taking it up into the air. Let's head to the airfield now where we'll learn more and also enjoy God's amazing creation from 8,000 feet in the air. Hello, Glenwood family. This is Mr. Tibbetts. I'm here at Pearson Airfield right next to uh, the Fort Vancouver. I'm in my air, my family's airplane here. It's uh, every airplane has a number. This one is November 4456 Sierra. We use phonetic words for the letters. Uh, I just want to give you a, a quick tour of the airplane, give you an idea of what it's like to be in a little airplane and what the parts are. So we'll start off with this side of the fuselage. This is called the fuselage. There's a little hole there that lets air into the flight instruments. We make our way to the back. This is called the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer. Attached to the horizontal stabilizer is a, called the control surface and it's called uh, elevator. And there's a trim tab attached to that. Both of these help the airplane as it flies to maintain control. Uh, attached to the vertical stabilizer is the rudder and that moves left and right with the rudder pedals on the floor. As I make a, our, my way around here, I'm checking all this for security and make sure that all the parts are attached like they should be so I don't have any problems in flight. This is part of the flight controls too, it's called the, the flap. There's one on each side of the, of the wing. The wing right here, the flaps. And then next to the flap is the aileron. That moves up and down. There's one on the other wing. When you move this one up, that one moves down. When you move this one down, that one moves up. That's what makes the airplane tilt as you go uh, along in flight. We make our way out to the wing tip. So in this particular airplane, it has a gas tank on the end of the wing. It's called a tip tank. There's where you put the fuel in right there. There's a light on the end of the tip tank. This one is red to show other pilots at night that it's the left wing. And then there's a, a flashing light on there to make it more visible. We make our way down and along the front part of the wing. This is called the leading edge of the wing. There's a little vein here called a stall warning vein. And that just uh, moves with the air current when you get close, when you get really slow and it will warn the pilot that you're getting close, you're getting too slow. And there's a, device here called the pitot tube that lets air in the front and the air pressure coming in the front runs the airspeed indicator inside the airplane to let the pilot know how fast they're going. The front of the leading edge here on top, there's a, a 
fuel gas cap. You pull that off and you put the gas in right there. This one holds 40 gallons. 40 gallons on each wing and then the tip tank is another 20 gallons, 20 on each side. That makes 120 gallons total. A lot of fuel in a little airplane like this. Anyway, we make our way to the uh, fuselage again. This part is called the, the wing root. Underneath, we check the tire and the landing gear. This particular small airplane has the retractable landing gear. So when, when uh, the airplane gets in the air, I put a little switch up and uh, this door comes down, opens up, lets the landing gear up in there and then closes it again and it makes the airplane very streamlined. And as we make our way around here, this is the engine. It's got a, I'm gonna just show you quickly what it looks like inside. It's a 300 horse uh, Continental engine, six cylinders. And in front of that, that's attached to the propeller, of course. This one has three blades. Some airplanes have four blades or two blades. Some even have five or six blades. This one has three. And the front, this silver thing is called a spinner. And also we have a uh, another wheel on the front of the airplane. It's called the nose wheel. This one also retracts. When I do my pre-flight, I make sure that the tire is in good shape and it's not flat and that everything is clear so that it can retract up into the airplane when the wheels go up. This is the inside of the airplane. Uh, the, the, where the pilot and the co-pilot sit is called the cockpit. Uh, this is where the controls are. Just so you understand a little bit about what happens up here when you pull back on this, that elevator that I told you about earlier goes up and the nose of the airplane will go up. When you push it forward, the elevator goes down, the nose goes down. When you turn the wheel like this, that's what happens when I turn the wheel. The ailerons go up and down and that makes the airplane uh, tilt from side to side. Inside here we have the radios, the flight instruments, the navigation equipment. Here's all the controls for the lights and to start the engine, the throttle, the propeller control, and the mixture. And the little handle I told you about that's the landing that puts the landing gear up and down. It's even shaped like a wheel. Hope you all enjoyed uh, my tour of Mount St. Helens today. I'm back at the airport, the airplane's in the hangar. Time to do an oil change. God bless you all. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mr. Tibbetts. The H in the word Father reminds me that God is our helper. When we feel afraid, 
alone, confused, or frustrated, God is always ready to help us. You know, I've noticed that Bobby is also a great helper. Every week, he helps Jake learn more about the Bible. Hiya, Jake. Are you ready to fly the kite? Sure. I just need to find something first. Maybe you can help. I found the Old Testament and the New Testament in my Bible, but the Sunday school teacher read from one of the Gospels. And I looked and I looked, but I can't find a book called the Gospels in my Bible. Well, you won't find a book called the Gospels in the Bible, because the word Gospels refers to the first four books of the New Testament. It's these four books right here. The book of Matthew, the book of Mark, the book of Luke, and the book of John. But what does the word Gospel mean? The word Gospel means good news. And the good news of the New Testament is this, that God sent Jesus as the Savior of the world. I definitely want to read about that. How do I find it in my Bible? You just go straight to the New Testament part of the Bible, and the Gospels are right at the beginning. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I like the sound of that. It's fun to say. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 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 Ooh, the wind is picking up. Let's go fly that kite. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Our next letter is E. And this reminds me that we can talk to our Father God about everything. The things that make us happy, the things that make us sad, the things that cause us to worry, the things that make us thankful. Say, let's share our three thankful things together now. I'm thankful that our God is such a loving father. I'm also thankful that he hears us when we pray. And I'm thankful that he forgives us when we do wrong. Have you heard the story of the lost son? This is another parable that Jesus told his friends, and it showed them long ago, and us today, that our Father God is always ready to forgive us. Hello, Glenwood families. Mr. Barnes here. Some of you may remember me from teaching in the third through fifth grades. Today we're going to be looking at a parable that Jesus taught the people. A parable was a story about everyday things that had a deeper meaning. In today's story, the story about the lost son, Jesus is talking to both people who were religious and people who didn't really know that much about God. And he was trying to get the point across that God loves us not because of what we do or who we are, but because of who he is, a loving and faithful father, a forgiving father. Well, enjoy the story. A man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. So he divided his wealth between them. And not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together and went on a journey into a distant country. And there he squandered his estate with loose living. Now when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country and he began to be impoverished. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swine were eating, and no one was giving anything to him. But when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread, but I am dying here with hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. So he got up and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, 
Quickly, bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fattened calf, kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. And he summoned one of the servants and began inquiring what these things could be. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But he became angry and was not willing to go in. And his father came out and began pleading with him. But he answered and said to his father, Look, for so many years I have been serving you, and I have never neglected a command of yours. And yet you have never given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your wealth with loose living, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you have always been with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, for this brother of yours was dead and has begun to live, and was lost and has been found. Well, you probably guessed in our story today that the Father represents our Heavenly Father. And just like this Father was waiting for his Son to come home, to return to him, he was waiting for him. And when his Son came and admitted that he had done wrong and asked for his Father's forgiveness, he forgave him. And that's how it is with our Heavenly Father. He wants us to return to him. He wants us to admit that we've done wrong. And he wants to forgive us. We just need to come, we need to ask him. In our story today, the older brother represents the Pharisees. The Pharisees, they were kind of resistant to God. They thought they knew everything about God. But God, he welcomes them to come to him as well. Would you take a moment and pray with me? Father, we are thankful that you love us. You know everything about us. You know everything that we've ever done. And yet you're willing to forgive us. I pray that if there's anyone listening today who has not returned to you, who has not admitted that they are a sinner, that they have done wrong things, that they would do so today. We thank you for your forgiveness. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. See you next time. You know, Jesus sure spent a lot of time with lots of different people. And many of these people did not follow God's rules like those who gathered taxes. This made those who were very proud of the way they followed God's rules, like the religious leaders called the Pharisees, feel very angry that Jesus would be kind and spend time with those who disobeyed God's rules. You're right, Freddie. And so Jesus decided to tell them a story about a father and two sons. One of the sons disobeyed the rules and the other son followed the rules. Jesus wanted the Pharisees to see that just because you follow God's rules, it doesn't mean that you have a tender heart towards God. Oh yes, I see. Because it's those who admit they have done wrong and who ask God to forgive them that have tender hearts towards God. And yes, just like the father in the story, our Heavenly Father forgives them and he welcomes them home. The last letter in the word Father is R. And this reminds me that our Father God reigns. He reigns as King over all the earth. This means that everything is under His control. He is all-powerful, all-wise, and always, always good. Psalm 97.1 says, The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Glenwood Kids, it has been so much fun visiting with you today. Thank you for visiting with me. I'll see you next time.